Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your girl, Mitzi, and this is Mitzi. Let's think about it today. We are getting real, and we are thinking about divorce. You know, when you think about divorce, you think of this nasty, bitter taste in your tongue. Like, why? And let's be honest, it's not something that's really planned. You know, unless you're one of those people that love to marry people and break up right away, then just get tons of divorces. You know what? That's your prerogative. Go ahead and do what you do. But usually people don't want that. So I have a special guest on my show, Sarah Armstrong. She wrote a great book called like ways to have a good divorce. And you know, and the good divorce, that is un plausible you know let's be honest that's not something you think about when you think about a divorce you know you think of anger and and fighting and wedding crashers <laughs> you know so Sarah why did you decide to write this book well great to be with you Mitzi thank you for having me on um you know actually it's interesting and I should start by saying you know just for the record I'm not an advocate for divorce you know, in an ideal world, couples that get married stay happily married for the long term. That's to your point. You know, you you don't set out when you get married to say, okay, I'm literally really looking forward to getting divorced. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> these days, you know, it's um, it's more common than ever. And so, you know, and I, and I generally say, you know, no one gets married to get divorced. No one generally gets divorced for positive reasons. There's usually something that has triggered that decision. But the children who are, you know, in that family don't get to make the decision that their parents are getting a divorce and their lives are the most significantly impacted by this decision. So in my situation, my daughter was actually seven when we decided to get divorced. And we went through, when we, and we actually made a conscious decision of how we were going to go through it. And I had actually, my parents had been married 55 years this year. They're amazing, you know, they're amazing picture of partnership. And I thought that that's what, I was going to have as well. And obviously things didn't turn out as planned. And so I had actually grown up seeing in my parents' friend group, very ugly divorces to your point, like, you know, in that mental model of something really bitter and ugly. And I thought, well, if we're, if we're making this change, how can we do it? So that grace is where our daughter's name grace would be kept in focus. And we would make the decisions that were best for her along the way. Yeah. That's really what we did. And so we went through a divorce. And this was now 14 years ago. She's turning 21 this fall. And oh, wow. amazing. You know, it's crazy. I can't believe I'm a 21-year-old. But um, you know, we went through the process. And afterwards, I had a number of friends that would come to me and say, you know, they had made their decision that they were going to go down this path. They said, Would you help me? Would you help me think through this? And somehow I'd become like the poster child for a good divorce. And so I said, yeah, I'm happy to help you think through it. And after I had helped them, they'd say, you should really write this guidance down. Well, Mitzi, I'm in the corporate marketing, global marketing world. I, you know, I don't fashion myself a writer. And so I thought, well, I'm not, I'm not going to probably do that. So I was actually at a, a business dinner in Mexico City with a group of colleagues and a, a colleague and actually a good friend of mine turned to me at dinner and he said, Sarah, you're so happy. And I said, Yeah. I'm really happy. He said, but you're divorced. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, getting a divorce is not a death sentence. You know, yeah. I'm happy. My daughter's happy. My ex-husband's happy. I said, we're all happy. Yes, we, we did get divorced, but you know, getting divorced is an action. You get divorced. What I don't think it needs to be is this negative cloud that follows you and your children and even your ex-spouse through the rest of their lives because you've chosen to, to do that action. Yeah, I, yeah, I absolutely agree. And it's nice that you guys made that conscious decision because sometimes it's not consciously there. And I'm pretty sure it was a real shock for you because coming from what people would say a stable home, you know, having their parents be married for so long and they were able to show that to their children to want to inspire to that. Yeah, I mean, it, that would have been like a total like wrecking ball, like, oh, but, you know, with that being said, like, how long did it take for you to like realize or was it instant for you as soon as you heard that, oh, we're going to get a divorce, that it was instant, like we're going to consciously do this the right way? Or was it just like it took you a little bit to realize like, man, this is this is real yeah, no, I think I think when you finally realize, again, because you don't plan, you know, again, you don't grow up learning how to get divorced, you don't plan, you know, you don't, you don't plan that you, you think about maybe getting married someday, you think about what your wedding might look like, you think about all these things in your future, you know, how to, 
have a family and work, all these different things you think about. You don't think, okay, when I get divorced, this is how I'm going to do it. So yeah. I do think there's there's a there's a time of realization that this is going to happen and this is really happening to your life. And I do think it's a very overwhelming time, you know, and um, there's so much, once you make that decision, all the things that come with that in terms of, you know, and that's really quite honestly what my my book is about. It's It's meant to be a very practical guide and that's why I call it you know the mom's guide to a good divorce it's meant to speak to women and now men can read it too in fairness but it's meant to speak to women and break down those decisions that you have to make in the discussions you have to make about those decisions into bite-sized pieces yeah because it is so overwhelming all the things that are coming at you at the moment and Mitzi when I was getting divorced I was given books and I they were so dense and thick and I, I opened them I closed them I never read them never read them and so when I decided to go down this path of, of capturing the guidance that I had been giving to my girlfriends and what I and that I followed for myself, I thought, how can I write it in such a way that it's consumable for the mindset that you're in at the time that this is all going on? Because you really can't take much in because you have so much going on in your head. Yeah. And I was reading that when um, I, when I got the book, I, I was reading that how you were just like, take your time walk it you know just move slow put it down if you need to take each each quarter of your life the whatever section that you may be facing through take it at at that time because you don't want to bombard yourself because it, like you said it was overwhelming and i and i love the fact that you did that and i and i was going through the book and i was reading um as much as i could and i was just like wow this is interesting because you you don't you don't expect somebody to read it all you know you're not one of those like oh 10 ways to make yourself better read it all now so you can practice yes. those 10 ways like no you were like take your time breathe it out see what works for you and your family but try this you know yeah. it wasn't like gun hone i'm gonna put feeding it down your throat or anything and that's the <laughs> nice thing about your book is, yeah. is oh. that you have that option yeah thank you and yeah actually it's a great point it's not meant to be read cover to cover Okay, it's broken into three phases, preparing for the change, during the change, and post the change. And it's written in these bite-sized pieces. There's 185 topics that are listed out in the table of contents, each topic, and each topic is mm -hmm. a page, right? You saw it's so it's very, you know, and so it's either a paragraph or the full page, you know, and it was interesting when I was actually outlining the book with the editor, and they said to me, well, you can put more, more than one topic on a page because you're wasting paper. <laughs> I said you know what I'll be environmentally friendly somewhere else but I really want one, one topic per page because I want to give the white space in the space that if all you want to do is read that one topic and to your point then close the book go for a walk reflect and then come back to it whether it's the next day the next week the next month wherever you are in your process that it's there for you and that it can just be that guide along the way and it, it's interesting when I did uh, launch the book, I, um, I had done a, a book signing at Barnes and Noble. And um, a, a couple months later, I was in the grocery store in the produce section and I was, you know, picking up my produce. And this woman walks up to me and she goes, she said, are you Sarah Armstrong, the author? And I had to stop because Mitzi, again, I don't think about myself. But yeah. I said, yeah, hey, mom. And she said, well, I was at your book signing at Barnes and Noble and I'm going through divorce and it's always, and, and I always, I'm like, I'm so sorry to hear you're going through divorce. She says, well, I, I bought your book and I carry it with me and it keeps me calm. And she said, thank you for writing this. And I said at the moment, I said, you know what, thank you for sharing that with me. And, the, and as she walked away, Mitzi, and I'm standing, you know, with my cart in the produce section, I said, you know, that's why I've written this book yes. to help that I don't know, you know, at all. It's not one of my girlfriends, you know, that I've helped along the way. And I've written it in such a way that it could keep her calm. And yes. I think that's, that's why I put this book out in the world. And I just want to help as many women, and in fairness, families, couples, as possible to go through this, because I just don't think there's enough conversation in society around the topic about how to have a good divorce, mm -hmm. you know? So I'd really like to help shift societal perception that a good divorce is an attainable outcome yes and that's why I, I i was so excited when i got reached out to possibly have you as a guest on my show and you agreed because oh my goodness I was like yes this is a good topic these are the ta taboos of society yes. that yes. we have created because of of this 
image that we are supposed to uphold despite how much it's killing the inside of ourselves and it's not fair it's not fair for yourself it's not fair for the people around you it's not fair for the environment that you're trying to set it's not mm -hmm. fair at all and it's better to just sometimes accept it slowly and accept it at your pace and that's why I also love the fact that you gave with that white space because the first thing I thought of was like you know what she gets she gives you notes and it, you also can put in your little side notes that was able to work for you and then at the very end of the book you have that section where it says pass it on to somebody else you know that right there is beautiful because women are helping other women just if you're going through this process you're able to help somebody else you know give them little key points that was able to work for you because everybody's different you know everybody perceives and understands and reacts differently to life so to have that moment to just reflect on this book and on that chapter that you may be going through and maybe facing and seeing other women because i've seen at the end you actually congratulate you actually gave thanks to a lot of other people that that helped you contribute to the book and i thought that's awesome because i'm like how did if someone doesn't anticipate divorce then why would you add this chapter in? but then the may at the end it made sense because other people other women had to go through that you know yeah. and i thought that was so beautiful do you think if they never contributed in the way that they have, do you think your book would have not been so powerful as it is? Yeah, it's a great question. No, I absolutely, and I should mention that the, the the friends that I helped through the process, I then, once I wrote down everything that I had been sharing with them, I went back to them and said, is this what we discussed? You know, what, what else? And so, yes, the richness of the book isn't just, you know, what I had shared as guidance. It was their, the collective experiences we had. And from, in fairness, from working moms, stay-at-home moms, you know, very different situations of what led everyone to their respective decisions to go through this really significant change in life. But I do think that it was the collection of those experiences that make it um, what it is. And, you know, as you said, the, the thing about societal perception of all this, you know, you know, if you step back, like, you know, a good divorce, you know, the definition of a good divorce is when two couple, like a couple puts their personal feelings aside for one another and focuses on what's best for the children. And actually my daughter, Grace, was the one that defined the term a good divorce for me. So we were actually standing at a CVS checking out and um, there was a People magazine on the newsstand right in front of us. And there was a celebrity couple getting divorced. And she said, mommy, is that a good divorce or a bad divorce? I said, Grace, I don't know. What's the difference between a good divorce and a bad divorce? She goes, well, good divorce is when the mommy and daddy are nice to each other like you and daddy. And a bad divorce is when they scream and yell at each other. And now she was, a, this was a year after we had gotten divorced. So she's eight years old. And we walked it out, out of that CBS that day, Mitzi. And I thought, you know what? The fact that Grace, a year after we've done this significant change to her life and our lives, mm -hmm. even what we had done is a good divorce. I said, what we, I think what we're doing, we're on the right path. You know, we're, yeah. let's keep, let's keep going. It gave me confidence that like the decisions made on her behalf about her life and how we're, we were each approaching my ex husband and myself that we were out to something. And so, you know, and I, I say that, you know, when a couple goes through divorce and children involved, the stakes are high. They're really high. And, you know, we owe it to our children to ensure that they're not collateral damage due to the divorce. You know, even though a couple has decided they no longer want to be married to one another, you know, they made a commitment to their yeah. children to be up in the healthiest environment possible. You know, and I, I joke that we cover the plugs, right? And we we make sure they wear bike helmets and we feed them organic milk. You know, we do, you know, we do all these things to make sure they're safe and healthy and happy. Yeah. But then the toxicity that can come with the divorce can have long-term impact. And the children's approach to relationships, their views on marriage, and actually their overall happiness in life. And so I, I think we have a responsibility as parents to take co-parenting seriously when you're in a divorce. And, you know, I, I just think the, the challenge is, though, it's not easy. I want to say that. I want to acknowledge that it's not easy, but it is doable. And it is so worth it for the sake of the children that you make every effort possible with whatever you can control, because by the way, it's it's you can't always control the other person, but for what you can control to do all you can so your children don't sit in that toxic environment. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I like that. I like the fact that you were able to just lay it out there so that people don't confuse 
it when you initially said it you're not an advocate for it and 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 in reality we are trying to do the best for your children and you know you're trying to make that the best thing and that people do need to remind themselves like trauma is easy to obtain and you whatever your children sees they're going to hold that forever because you always will hold the, the trauma that you have felt when you were a child and to put that into reflection because i know i've seen it in your book you wrote it like sometimes you had to take a second and reflect on your own childhood and the memories that you went through and how they were precious to you you know you want to keep that with your children and I think that's an amazing thing because we need to put that into perspective you know especially when you have children you can't forget your own childhood once you forget once you have a child and think now you're a full-blown adult like no your inner child is still screaming inside you wanting love too like people people need to put that into play and remember that but one of the biggest questions is this at the end you also um did a big thanks to I believe it was your editor or someone that gave you the idea for the color gray for your book cover I mean and that's really interesting and I really want to know your idea on that because it's all over your website like gray is a color but for me gray is bland you know gray is like me you know and like your book is not me I mean you're it's like why would you choose that color for such a book that has so much so much to give Oh, you're so funny. So it's interesting. Um, it's kind of a blue gray, I would say. And okay. I, <laughs> technically, and I did work very hard and they had the patience of me getting to the right tone of that blue gray because I felt like it was a calming color. Okay, it goes back to calm. So it was, um, I and I think there that's the whole purpose of this book is to give people some calm in a very, very tumultuous time in life. And so the you know, gray uh, of the book cover and actually the website and everything to your point, <clears throat> excuse me, has that tone. And it's meant to just kind of not be distracting, but just kind of allow you to, again, have some calm as you're going through the storm in your life. There you go. Thank you for that. Thank you for that explanation. Now that I'm looking at the book, I'm like, you know what? It does have a sense of clue. So... <laughs> <laughs> Slight technicality, but yes, it, yeah, is, yeah. A, it is a blue gray. It is a blue gray. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. I, I love that. I think that's very awesome. Awesome. But, you know, biggest question is, I, I guess that's the real reason why people really want to listen is, why do you think divorce initially already has that bad taboo to it? I know we kind of picked up to it here and there with little with the conversations that we said, but in reality, to put it plain and clear, why do you think that is? You know, I think divorce is seen as a scarlet letter in society. I think you are late that way. And it's, it is meant to stick with you. It is meant to be the label that you then carry. And I think that that's unfortunate. And I will tell you, I even, I say this with a little bit of a lighthearted tone, but I went to the dentist recently and I, and they had the status that you have to fill out a little form. And it said, you know, single married divorced and, and, I, and I thought why does it matter if I'm divorced if you're cleaning my teeth yeah like like why don't why do I have to check that box like it's not there's nothing you know so but it, you get these signals from society that you have to carry that label everywhere and you know I think that that you know yes I'm divorced it's something that's happened I'm all you know I'm also a lot of other things but right. it is it is something that society wants you to carry wants you to kind of wear yeah. and I just and I don't believe Mitzi you, again it's an action it's a process you go through it does not need to define your life your children's lives in a negative light for the long term and I just don't believe that I don't believe that has to be the case but it takes us you know changing that perception you know and to both changing the perception that it's a label you have to carry and then, you know, I once, I had recently had someone tell me that I make divorce look too good. Okay. That's what people say. That's crazy. There's no such thing because at the end of the day, I mean, you're going to go through it through your own, own eyes, you know, yeah. and yeah. just because it, it may seem well for, for you doesn't mean it actually was well. I mean, you, you probably had oh, moments hard. where you were like, no oh my goodness. Yeah, out. Okay. Like people don't see that. Yeah, and that's my thing. I said, look, it's an incredibly hard thing to go through. And and but my thing is because I'm happy. Yeah. 
after my divorce, that's the thing. It's like, why are you so happy? I'm like, well, I'm living a happy life. I'm, I did this so I could be happier. <laughs> How know? dare you? How dare you choose happiness, Sarah? <laughs> Goodness, stop it. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I'm so sorry that and people are, are, are so absent-minded and they can't acknowledge the fact that they can truly be happy through a difficult time in their life. Yeah. You know, you can choose that. You can consciously choose, choose that by just acknowledging what you even identify as happiness, you know, because what we perceive as happiness really does determine if we will be happy or not, you know, and it's those little milestones. It's not those giant goals. It's those little milestones that those every days, every moments, every second times you, you got to just take them just by a little bit, a little bit to realize like you have real joy around you and in you. And it's, it's amazing. It's amazing feeling yeah. like it's contagious. And I'm glad that you still like show it and embrace it because you deserve to, you deserve to have that happiness. No one deserves not to be happy. Right. It's crazy. I know. It is. It is. But that's what the kind of, when you asked about, you know, what, what do you think the perception, why is it this way? I just, I think there's just a, such a deep rooted. Yeah. But you're that, right. That you're, you, when you get divorced, you're going to be unhappy and, and it's this negative thing. And, and, and by the way, it is, it's, I will say it is not something I, I wouldn't, I don't, wouldn't choose for people to have to go through it, right? You don't say, oh, look, you know, have fun with that. It's not, it is, it is a tough, tough process. But it, again, it's, it's how we decide what we do both through the process and after the process. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a key. And I do love the fact that you use it as a, as a scarlet letter, because it is, you know, once you get labeled and the fact that they had you do that at the, at the dentist, like, excuse me, why does it matter? I'm a human being. I'm, I'm living. I mean, that's, that doesn't even, it's not relevant for my teeth, like goodness. So I understand what you're saying and I'm glad you used that analogy and I'm glad you gave the examples and what people told you because people need to realize that, you know, it happens to many of us. And if you're going through some type of divorce or if you're going through this struggle, man or woman, just the experience alone is just heartbreaking because even as a man, you can still have this scarlet letter and think of like, well, well, what's wrong with you? You're not married material anymore. You know, there's so many taboos that comes with having this label on you. And I'm glad Sarah is speaking out on this and, and, and is able to put some shine into this darkness that we all see divorce into because it's not what it is anymore. You know, it's not what the past made it seem. The generations before us made it seem like now it's, it's common. It's normal. I mean, it shouldn't be normal, but at the end of the day it is. And we've learned to evolve and adapt and, and make it better than what it has to be, you know, and it's that conscious decision. So I truly thank you for that. And if anybody's interested to know more, I have Sarah's lovely photo on my website along with her website. So just, just click it, just click, click. And there it goes. It goes directly to her website. You'll find so much great content on her website. You will not be disappointed. Trust me, you won't. But to leave some lasting words, Sarah, what can you leave us off with? Even though you already gave us so much great detail and so much great information and some tips already, what can you leave us off with? I just want everyone to know that, you know, it does take effort, as I mentioned, but it is so worth it for you and your children and your long-term happiness to, to do whatever you can to try to have a good divorce. It is, it is an attainable outcome. And I just hope that you try to go down that path that this is a path that you are on. Awesome. There you go. You guys heard it first from Sarah that you gotta, you gotta listen. You gotta really think about this. Y'all always, always, always keep thinking y'all be safe. Bye.